This is Kevin with Divinely Design, and we have a mixed media photo layout today. Um, I wanted to do kind of a sea themed uh, page because of this picture, and my friends live down at the shore. And I watched a video where this woman sculpted this mermaid um, out of clay, and that sort of inspired me to make my own sculpture, and I sculpted a squid. Um, here I'm applying some matte gel. Uh, I would normally use clear gesso, but I wanted to try this gel. It worked fairly similarly, except um, it gives it a little bit more of a shine to it, but I wanted a non-porous surface to work on. Uh, this is a 12 by 12 piece of pattern paper from Stamping Up. Uh, I'm going to start coloring it with some silk colors. So I have a nice non-porous surface, and I used a little bit of the silks and just watered them down with some water, um, just a little bit of water, just to make them a little bit thinner. And then just sort of swept them across the page. I'm going for kind of a, you know, a water theme. So I did some blue and then did sort of the same with some green and then just used a brush with some water on it to kind of soften them. But I did still want to leave some streaks there in place. Moving on to some sprays, I'm going to use a combination of Lindy's Stamp Gangs, Heidi Swap, and a little bit of Delusions um, in kind of blues and greens here. Doing a mixture of actually spraying them and splattering them. Um, again, just staying in the blue and green family and just building up some layers and adding some dimension to the background. I'm not going to do a whole lot of other things to the background itself. Um, you know, not stamping or um, I wasn't even going to do any embossing, but I do some later on. So just using colors here, I'm attaching that 12 by 12 pattern paper to just a stiffer piece of um, it's actually a, 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 a pad that's used for, I think, for acrylic paint, but it's nice and stiff. So I just matted it down to that using some multi matte medium um so uh you know so it has a nice flat surface there uh, a lot of the sprays and the, the the gel i used had created a little bit of warping in the paper so this will help it to stay nice and flat okay so i have a nice flat surface with my background kind of done in colors. Moving on to some Blue Fern Studio chipboards, and here I'm using some gelatos to color them. Um, I use a lot of the metallics here, so this is, a, I think it's metallic melon, uh, which gives a nice coral kind of color to it, uh, which is what I was trying to suggest. Uh, uh, this chipboard piece is actually like, I think it's called leafy twigs is what it's called, but it sort of looked a little bit kind of like branch coral to me, so uh, that's why I was using it. Uh, a couple other chipboard pieces here, the, the word that says wonder. Um, I think this color is called boysenberry. Um, and I ended up not loving the final look with just the boysenberry. I don't know, it's... I, I don't know, I just didn't love it with just the plain boysenberry. So then I used another gelato and put it on top a metallic um, a metallic blue I think and just sort of added that on top and then used my finger to rub them in and then I liked that result it was um, I think it was better than just the straight boysenberry it gave a little bit more depth to it and then I have some small flourishes here uh, that I'm also going to color using some gelatos um, kind of in the more in the mint and green family uh, the metallic gelatos are really nice to work with. They're really sort of soft and creamy and spread very easily. Um, I had gotten some uh, bright gelatos, and I think that's what the boysenberry came from. They're a little bit harder to kind of rub into the chipboard, but the metallics are, are just lovely to work with. So I just used a brush after I was done sort of rubbing in to clean them up. You get sort of little chunks of gelato sort of stuck in crevices. So used a brush to clean them up and make them look nice. Um, and that was kind of it for the chipboard pieces. 
this is um, actually some uh, um, paper paste, um, oh, I'm totally, fiber paste, uh, that I had used on another project and I had kind of left over. It was just this chunk. So I'm using some sprays here to give it some dimension, just dropping them on and then using some water to let them drip down. It was kind of a uniform light blue and I wanted to give it a little bit more depth and dimension. Um, and I'm going to use this as a, a piece to put the, the photo on actually. I'll do some more work with it later on in the, in the video as well. Using some gelatos to kind of frame out my 12 by 12 paper. And again, I'm using some in the blue and green family. Um, using more metallics. Uh, I did use a little bit of that boysenberry again because I wanted this to be a little bit dark, you know, um, to kind of give some edges to my to my paper here. Um, I, the, it wasn't quite dark enough for me, so I used a tiny bit of purple, like on the very edge of the paper, and um, that 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 did it. That was nice to give me a nice darker edge for it. Um, it's a little hard to see in the video here, but um, it 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 did give it a nice frame then. Just sewing some close-ups there. Okay, now I'm going to start working on the layout. So I have this picture, and the idea was when I sculpted this squid that there would be a piece of it that one of the tentacles was sort of going down into the paper and would come up, um, you know, on the on the other side of the picture. So here I'm sort of taking. Um, a hole and I didn't want to go all the way through the paper so I'm just sort of pulling up pieces of it uh, in a circle shape sort of implying you know that the tentacle came out of that hole um, so I pulled up the edges of that circle uh, gave it some dimension and then I'm using some darker shade uh, I think this is a Lindy stamp gang spray and a darker blue color um, again to give it sort of that faux, this tentacle is coming out of the page here. Um, there's another piece of the tentacle that kind of, you know, is, is supposed to be going into the page. So I'm going to repeat that step there where I sort of identified where it was on the page and then used um, an X-Acto knife and I used a little pokey tool to kind of scratch the surface of the paper and make a round area where the tentacle would have gone in. So again, the idea is the tentacle sort of is reaching under the, the photo there down at the bottom and then comes up on the left hand side. And then so I have a separate sculpted piece um, of tentacle that kind of comes out um, in addition to the like the big tentacle piece, the big body of the squid that's the main clay sculpted one. So I used this paper and this um, fiber paste and I put it down and when I put it down it, it just matched too much. It was it almost blended right into the paper itself. So I'm going to use some Lindy stamp spray here um, and a brush and just sort of apply it around the edges so that it gives those edges definition and uh, it, it sort of makes the whole fiber paste thing pop which I really was very happy with the effect that uh, I can't, you know, sort of finished up with here. Just adding a little bit more to the interior of the fiber paste also. Okay, um, now I'm going to, I have some really uh, rough, just um, sort of, I think, um, cord that I had, and I used three pieces of it to make a braid, and I'm going to use that to sort of frame the picture uh, on two sides, uh, because, only on two sides, because the squid is kind of on the other two sides, so this is just on the top and on the left-hand side, and in fact, on the left-hand side, I end up having to trim it a little bit because I didn't want it to get in the way of the squid's tentacles. I wanted them flat on the piece of paper. So I, you'll see me trim it here a little bit so that the squid's tentacles will lie nice and flat. And then just adhering that down with some 3-in-1 glue. 
and then gluing the squid down. The squid was some oven baked clay and I didn't film creating it. Um, it took me a while actually, it took forever to make it. It took like three hours just to make that, that squid piece. Um, which the whole page took me three hours to put together once I had the squid. So um, the squid was kind of hard, but I, I'm super happy with how it came out. It looks fantastic. Um, after it was baked, I used some sprays, again, some Heidi Swap, I think it was called Blush, uh, and some Delusions Red to color it, uh, and it came out great. Just putting those chipboard pieces down here, I had some um, textural elements, a piece of papyrus, um, and sort of this open weave um, jute kind of ribbon uh, that I had sort of just pulled apart and it looks, um, you know, rustic and, and kind of like kind of a net from the sea. That's that piece right there. Um, this is the papyrus and just giving some, and this is a piece of ribbon, um, like burlap ribbon. So the title for the page was the chipboard wonder. And then I have a Tim Holtz, uh, metal embellishment, um, the whole kind of theme here being a little bit of a fantasy, right? Um, so encouraging imagination and wonder, sort of what I was going for. Um, now to sort of reinforce kind of the underwater kind of theme, um, I'm, I have these, they're, they're large sequins. They're just these shiny round pieces. Um, and so... I have those as well as some acrylic rounds that go on top of them that sort of magnify them a little bit. Um, you know, trying to go for kind of a bubble kind of look. So gluing down the, the, the shiny sequins and then putting kind of a dot of the three in one glue on the acrylic uh, sphere or hemisphere and then sliding them into place so that I could get all the um, air out so it looks like a bubble. This is actually a wedding decoration, I think. It's just a strand of like tiny little pearl-like beads, but I thought it kind of worked well here, e either like bubbles or coral or just sort of some kind of underwater, um, I don't know, long stringy things. And I think it sort of emphasized the, the tentacles on the squid as well. So there are these three strands of just tiny stringed beads and I'm kind of placing them where I want and then just gluing them down um, so that they're sort of waving in the water. I think I'll have a little close of it, close up of it later on. And then uh, continuing with the kind of bubbly kind of theme um, this is a larger plastic piece I was trying to see if I wanted to use, but decided not to. Using some sequins here in the blue and green, again, just putting some of those down. Um, I'm going to adhere them with some Tombow multi matte medium and um, using this little tool that has a sticky end to, to move the sequins around. Uh, and then I'm going to put some stickles on. Uh, I have some silver uh, stickles, which uh, I'll add in just little dots. And not a whole lot of them, and I didn't make them very big, but they give a little bit of a dimension to it. You know, they it's kind of a, a gel medium that's thick, so you can pipe it, not pipe it, you can squeeze it on into a little dot and it'll stay there. It won't flatten out. Well, it flattens out a tiny little bit, but it will stay three-dimensional. And then the same kind of technique, but I'm going to use some glossy accents. So this will keep its shape also, but it will dry completely clear. So we just have a mixture of kind of these circular elements here, large and small, opaque, translucent, uh, all coming up the right-hand side there. I felt like this left bottom corner needed something and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. So this is some Prima glass glitter. I ended up not really liking how that looked, felt like it wasn't enough. I, I kind of needed more. So I, I thought, okay, well maybe I will do some 
I'll use a stencil and some embossing paste. Um, and then on top of that, I use my, that's my cat visiting there. Um, I'm going to use some embossing powders from Lindy Stamp Gangs. Now, I, I like the overall page, but I will say that I was, I wish I kind of wouldn't have done this part of it, or if I had done it, that I hadn't used the embossing paste. Um, I'm sorry, that I hadn't used the embossing powder, um, that I had just left the embossing paste there and maybe done some sprays with it or let it dry completely and sort of drip some color on. Um, the powder that I'm going to use is from Lindy Stamp Gang, and it's a blue. It's supposed to be a blue powder, but it's this, I, it comes out super dark. It's, it's kind of like black. And then on top of it, when I use the embossing powder, um, because of that gel medium I had put down on the, on the 12 by 12 paper, it stuck everywhere. It didn't stick just to the embossing pa um, paste that I had put on. So, um, I put some on and I thought this isn't working out. And then I tried to kind of see if I could get the green to kind of cover up the majority of it. And that didn't seem like it was going to work. So then I took a brush and tried to brush off as much of that embossing powder that was not on the, um, paste and, you know, just tried to make sure it was only going to be on the paste areas so that you would be able to see this sort of art deco wave kind of like pattern from there. Um, at this point, really, I <laughs> probably what I should have done is scraped off the embossing paste and started over and cleaned off this corner and, and did something a little bit neater. Um, but I was still sort of like, well, I think it might work. Um, and it probably, again, it would have been better if it, if that blue weren't so dark. I wish this just looked a little bit more subtle. So I embossed it and this was sort of the final result and I thought it's a little bit too blue. So I thought maybe some green would help kind of to soften it um, and work it into the page. So I took some spray and then a brush with water and just sort of blended it into the rest of the page and then dabbed it off. So that's the final page. Um, and I uh, hope you like it. I have some close ups here. Um, and I'll have some still photos in just a second. So thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click that thumbs up button. If you aren't subscribed to my channel and like crafty and soapy videos and card making and all kinds of crafty things, uh, click on uh, that subscribe button. And check back here at Divinely Designed for more crafty and soapy videos. And uh, have a great day, everybody. Thanks for watching.